tricky under eye area issue. Suggestions for solutions and surgeons, please. After three micro liposuctions to remove much excessive fat from fat transfer intended to correct hollows under eyes, a prominent mound of raised tissue, fat plus skin, above a hollow looking shelf remains under the right eye. When mobile, an unnaturally angled fold appears. Note, a little bellotero was placed under the right eye around two months ago, helped fill inner area, but may have made the fold more obvious. Thoughts and suggestions, please. Prefer East Coast USA, but willing to travel. Thank you for your question. You submitted uh, several sets of photos of your eye area, and you state that you had microliposuction done three times to address excess fat after undergoing fat transfer to the under eye area. And you're concerned of a mound-like appearance under the right eye and that you state that you did have some Bellatero placed to help blend the area. And you've shown in the photos uh, basically the eyes at rest and the eyes with expression. And you're looking for some guidance as to how to proceed moving forward. Well, I can share with you my experience and my, uh, my perception of this issue and how I've dealt with this issue in my practice. A little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years and this type of issue has presented itself in multiple ways for a few reasons that I'll explain as to what my position is about fat grafting under the eyes. You see, the, the history of fat grafting is, has always been for the surgeon the optimal filler. The, the natural filler comes from your own body and it is plentiful and certainly convenient during surgery to take fat from one area, transfer to another area. It can certainly be effective in many areas on the body, uh, including the face, um, as well as for hand rejuvenation, for example. But for a long time, I have felt that fat grafting under the eyes is, uh, has unfortunately too many um, issues that make it problematic. When you look at the eyelid area, you're dealing with skin that is the thinnest skin of the body you are dealing with an area that is relatively unforgiving. In other words, basically any irregularities are, are very obvious. Now, before the modern day fillers, fat grafting certainly potentially was, had, had a certain potential role given the absence of any great alternative. Now, before, before there was Restylane introduced in the U.S. around 2005, the option was either to do fat grafting or a silicone uh, tear trough implant or nothing. So, moving the clock forward, what I've been seeing a lot is a, a variety of issues. Patients who have had fat grafting will either have no results, in other words, the fat didn't, didn't completely make it at all, or they'll have irregularities because parts of the fat survived and parts of it didn't, or they have an inflammatory response and the body forms a capsule around the fat. Now, essentially the challenge with fat grafting, with as many advances in fat grafting there have been, remains essentially the same as it was more than 10, 20 years ago. And what is that? We want, if you want to place volume in any area, you want safety, you want predictability, and you want to have minimal downtime. So the challenge with fat grafting is really, for me, is the, is the predictability. When you place fat in this area, you are not necessarily placing a uniform smooth substance like you are when you're using an injectable filler like a hyaluronic acid filler. You're placing fatty tissue and this is a combination of different fat cells and, support and connective tissue. 
Now, there are many ways to process the fat, and we have a lot of options in that way. But I, it re still remains to be, in my opinion, too unpredictable. And thanks to the modern-day fillers, essentially I recommend my patients lean more towards fillers to treat hollows rather than using fat in that particular area. Now, that being said, I think the, the part of the frustrations you may have had with the, the suctioning procedures is when fat is placed in this space, Although the surgeon wants to place it in a very particular way, in a very particular plane, and things may look good at the time of surgery, it is my experience when I have operated on these patients to remove this fat, that the fat ends up in multiple levels throughout the tissue between the front and the back, in between the eyelid and the orbicularis muscle, within the orbicularis muscle, behind the orbicularis muscle, and it's essentially like this fat and scar tissue forms different little nodules and planes. So there's a lot, it, it's, it's much more involved to actually remove this. Now that's being said, it is possible to address this issue because you're not really just removing fat, you're removing the scar tissue and capsule and everything else that goes with it. And it's important to also maintain the integrity of the eyelid. So there is never really an absolute when you are planning this type of surgery. Generally speaking, this type of operation I, I try to do from behind the eyelid to preserve as much of the integrity of the muscle and, and try to dissect out these nodules, but never too aggressively to compromise the eyelid muscular tone. In addition, there is also the risk and the potential need for additional surgery to support the lower eyelid should there be any type of loss of integrity of the tissue. Now, the eyelid is a, is a deceptively complex structure, and the lower eyelid, the layers of the skin, the muscle, and the posterior layers are all in combination very strong. Individually they're much more weak. So they behave like columns holding up the lower eyelid. So I think that in your situation you should be mostly focused on the appearance as it is when you're at rest. The appearance and with movement when it comes to dynamic motion is always going to be different and because once a tissue has been has been operated on and there's, there's all these irregularities. The muscle and the symmetry cannot really be perfect when it comes to activity. But certainly at rest to have this bulge and elevation, it seems that it should be relatively uh, isolated and sh can be probably addressed. But understanding the risks and benefits of this type of surgery is critically important and that should only be done through a formal consultation. So I would recommend you meet with an oculoplastic surgeon, an oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon, someone who focuses uh, mostly on cosmetic, who has experience in this area, and learn about these options and these risks. A proper exam requires also understand, um, evaluating the eyelid tone and the structure and actually to touch and feel and see what that mound of area uh, feels like so you can actually kind of anticipate what to see when you are in, in surgery and, and then take it from there. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.